In the meantime, I want to talk more about the coronavirus's impact on the airline industry and want to welcome former Continental Airlines CEO and CBS contributor Gordon Bethune is joining us. Uh, Dennis uh, Tazier is also an American Airlines pilot with over 30 years of flight experience. Tazier is a spokesman for, American, uh, for America's, uh, pa excuse me, Americans uh, Pilots uh, Union. It's not America's because of American Airlines. The Allied Pilots Association, the union suing the airline Thursday, seeking a halt of flights to China. The next day, American Airlines suspended flights to China. And uh, we thank both of you uh, for being here. Uh, let me let me uh, start uh, start with you. Uh, I, want, I, want to start, I want to start an American first of all. Do you think, Mr. Chaser, that the that the suit is what forced this issue, and what was happening behind the scenes? Well, clearly, uh, we were we were left with no other choice, and our president on Thursday directed our pilots to cease and desist flying to China to protect our passengers. Uh, several hours later, the State Department came out and covered uh, China in a do not travel zone. Um, shortly after that, and compliments to the White House for its leadership in taking decisive action to uh, contain this virus. Unfortunately, what we learned over the weekend is that while we were very pleased and proud of American for putting people over profits and taking down the China flights, we learned that they may be bifurcating Hong Kong. And when you look closer at the State Department map, you see Hong Kong is colored yellow, a gold color as we prefer to look at it. We're very concerned over that. And American right now in the weekend uh, media report said they're considering reinstating uh, Hong Kong depending on their operational needs. Um, so uh, so Dennis, that's just, not going to work. Just take us all behind the scenes. What is happening right now? What are you telling American about what you want? And what were you telling American about what you wanted last week before the lawsuit? Well, on Tuesday, our president went directly to senior management at American and said, let's take a pause in this. It's moving so rapidly, and there are so many flights going through here. Let's get a few days off on this so we can gather our senses. Uh, they heard us. They were respectful, but they pressed on with the flights. And so that's why Thursday, our president, with the leadership of the union behind him, took this, this uh, aggressive step. Um, we did it with Venezuela, but we're always going to put our passengers' safety and our fellow crew members do you think they first. Do you think they would have stopped the flights without your lawsuit? We'll never know. But the bottom line is they have made the right <laughs> choice. They need to make the right choice on Hong Kong right now. Right. Gordon, you're, you're listening well, to this. Do you think that they should yeah. shut down the Hong Kong flights, too? Or well, all Hong they, Kong flights? They, they should, you know, they they obviously need this employee support. So you can't run an airline just on your own. So it's incumbent on all the employees and the airlines to get along and work out whatever they're going to work out. They both have interest. I think they're going to do what the government allows them to do and may, in fact, do less than that. But I don't see where our government is going to open up China anytime soon. If Let me ask you, Gordon, what would you do in this instance? Meaning, when you, you said that the airlines could do less than the government wants or more? I'm trying to understand what that meant. No, no, I'm saying that, you know, the government may open it up uninhibited and you do less because of your concerns and your employee concerns. Right. You've got to address those. So you're going to do what's ever best for your employees and the company, and they both have a vital interest in success. Right. You've been around, Gordon, and seen lots of different <laughs> um, epidemics, pandemics, all sorts of things uh, take place over the years. How much do you think a hit to business this is going to really be long term? Do you Andrew, have any, any way to measure it, any way to guess if you were inside the, the corner office uh, of an airline right now? What, what, kind of, what kind of math and work would you be doing? Well, I, I once said, you know, I remember Johnny Carson's Karnak. You can pull a number out of the air to suspend service like some have. At the same time, you've got to deal with the facts. It's like major snowstorms or whatever. They're going to hit your income statement, but you can monitor or expect some of those. This is open-ended, and China is such a vital trading partner in so much of America that you're going to have to, it's got to get solved. Now, I, I don't know Gordon, what it's going to take to do it. What did you think when you heard the, the decision, stop all flights from China, when you were sitting there? Were, were you shocked? Were you surprised? Did you, did you immediately think, wow, that's going to hurt the bottom line on all these airlines in a very big way? Or you would, what would you think? Well, I, I thought it was the appropriate thing to do. It's just like you stop flying in airports during the snowstorms. You, you know, the government sh shuts the airport down, and it's not up to you. So I thought that was a thing to do. It kind of puts everybody on even playing field. But most importantly, I think it inhibits the spread of the virus into this country. Right. Uh, we just showed a graphic uh, about when um, 
traffic has been stopped until Delta is a month more. Um, and I was going to ask Dennis what you make of that. Well, go ahead, I'm Dennis. Sorry, the question, uh, yes. Uh, so Delta going a month more. Each company is going to make its individual decision. But as, as uh, Mr. Bethune just mentioned how important China is to us, it absolutely is. And that's why we have to take these proactive steps to uh, uh, stop the spread of this. Your two doctors that were on in the earlier hour, I encourage your viewers to watch that. They cut right to the chase. And in Hong Kong, there's so much uncertainty. Look at the Wall Street Journal report that came out this weekend. That is not a safe zone. It is the CDC still covers it as an endangered or an, right. an area of threat. 